right. Hey everybody, Renan here, National Geographic filmmaker and photographer. We just got back from one of the craziest expeditions of our lives and we were battle testing the new Alpha One from Sony. So just wanted to give you a bit of my real world experience with the camera. This, this trip was to the Tapui rock formations in Guyana, and we were helping a scientist complete his life's work, as well as climbing a first ascent with Alex Honnold. A lot of the details are still kind of secret because there's a National Geographic Disney Plus TV show that's gonna come out. But I can share a little bit of the behind the scenes story and unreleased footage as well as just tell you how this, uh, this beast of a camera performed. <laughs> to be honest, it was one of the hardest trips we've ever done in terms of camera gear because we were operating in the jungle in these extremely muddy, slimy, treacherous conditions where everything is wet and really it's impossible to keep anything dry, let alone camera equipment. Yeah. I'm getting like this fog in there that I don't like. <laughs> My role in the expedition was co-directing the video story as a cinematographer and as a photographer. So I needed something really lightweight where I could keep up with world-class athletes and the locals who were maybe even stronger than the world-class athletes at moving through the jungle. And the A1 was sort of the perfect tool for that because I had the higher end, high res stills, as well as 8K 10 bit video. I had 4K slow motion, also 10 bit, and it was just all in this package. I ended up setting it up um, with these custom keys here that you see that one, two, three. One was 8K video, two was 4K slow mo, and three was my raw stills. I love what they took from the, the A9 here with the manual button control between your, your shooting speeds and your manual versus autofocus. Having that built in here up top was really helpful um, when something was malfunctioning. You know that you could always just press a physical button and have it work and do what it's supposed to do. This was the only camera that I had on this entire trip, which is a, a huge amount of trust. Um, I begged for multiple bodies for backup, but since it was in prototype phase, I wasn't able to get it. So I just took the leap of faith. And um, yeah, there were certainly multiple times that I thought I might have, have killed this camera, but it just kept ticking. For example, we were shooting slow motion time lapses down the river on this wild boat ride to get into the remote village and the tripod fell over completely into the water. This camera was submerged without a housing. Um, it came out, it kept ticking. Um, later on in the trip, I face planted into the mud. So worried that I, I killed the Alpha One, but that came out, I just toweled it off with my t-shirt and it kept going. So I don't, I don't know what they did with the weather ceiling for this new Alpha One, but definitely impressive as to what I just put it through. You can just see from some of this sample footage of how intimate these settings are. And that's when it's nice to have a camera like the Alpha One that's so small and lightweight that you can switch between these photo and video modes really seamlessly shoot with a silent shutter and really just be a fly on the wall and not be too intrusive in these situations. It is just a huge privilege to document a lot of these people, cultures and, and places. So being able to do that sometimes comes down to your physical ability to keep up and do that at a high level. And I really think that now with cameras like the Alpha One that 
compete with the best cinema and stills cameras on the market. You can come back with stories that provide meaning and create positive change, whether it's conservation or social activism. And yeah, tools like this just help, help push those limits and allow us to do better work.